In this video, we're going to be sketching y equals x squared take away 2x take away 48 over x squared take away 5x plus 4. OK, first thing to do, spot whether you can factorise the numerator denominator. So this would be x take away 8, x plus 6. And in the denominator, we would have x uh, take away 4, x take away 1. So first thing to spot, vertical asymptotes. That's when the denominator is 0, so we're going to have those at 1 and 4. So when x equals 1, and when x is equal to 4, OK, like so. And now where is it crossing the x-axis? That's when uh, the numerator is 0, so at minus 6 and 8. So minus 6 somewhere over here, and 8, let's say somewhere over there. OK. Right. Um, how about where it crosses the y-axis? That's going to be when x is 0. So we're going to have minus 48 over 4. And so that's minus 12. So somewhere down here is where it's crossing the y-axis. Right, uh, how about horizontal asymptote? Well, divide top and bottom by x squared, and we can see that we're going to get 1 over 1, as we uh, have been getting in the previous examples. So as x tends to possible negative infinity, this will tend to 1 over 1. Um, so, y equals 1, OK, looks like that. Right, so we also need to determine whether it's crossing the horizontal asymptote again at any other point. Well, actually, we don't know if it's crossing the horizontal asymptote at all at this, at this rate. Um, so let's see what we've got. So um, x squared take away 2x take away 48 over x squared take away 5x plus 4 equals 1. So x squared take away 2x take away 48 is equal to x squared take away 5x plus 4. So I can subtract x squared from both sides. If I add 5x to both sides, I get 3x, and 48 plus 4 is 52. So x is going to be equal to 52 over 3. OK. So 52 over 3 is 17.3 recurring. Right. OK. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my sketch slightly to give myself a little bit more space. I'm going to put 8 there. I'm just going to put minus 6 a little bit closer as well, somewhere like there, OK? So, as I said, you know, that's 17.3 uh, recurring. So what's that telling you? Well, that's telling you that the curve must cross the y equals 1 line, uh, y equals 1 horizontal asymptote somewhere along here, somewhere beyond x equals 8. So the curve's got to be tending towards that y equals 4. So it's got to come up from this direction through 8, right? And then it's got to cross the horizontal asymptote. And then it's still got to tend towards that line, though. So it's got to come back on itself in order to tend towards that line. OK, so it does, you know, the, the way that I've had to sketch this is a bit kind of scrunched up. It'll be kind of like much more extended and smoother than that. But it, what that's telling you is at that point there, it crosses through the horizontal asymptote and then must come back on itself. So actually, that's telling you that there is a stationary point in that region, OK, somewhere beyond 52 thirds. 
Now, as for this part of the graph, it's got to be uh, crossing through at minus 2, uh, minus 12 rather, through at minus 6, and then tending towards that horizontal asymptote. We know it can't do the same thing that it did over there because we, it only crosses that horizontal, ax, horizontal asymptote once. Okay? So then, what about in between? Right? Is it positive or is it negative? Is it up here or is it down here? So if I substitute in like x equals 2, uh, I'm going to substitute x equals 2 into this. So what do we get? 2 take away 8, well that's negative, and 2 plus uh, 6 is positive. 2 take away 4 is negative, 2 take away 1 is positive. So we've got a negative divided by a negative, which is positive, and so the curve must be somewhere up there. So this one has a little bit more interesting behaviour, where it has to cross the horizontal asymptote uh, in order to then come back on itself. You might want to look this up on uh, Desmos or some other graphing package just so you can see what this graph looks like.